Man, I am loving getting into Middle Eastern fragrances. It's blowing my mind how cheap and affordable you can find these Middle Eastern fragrances for. And some of them smell of luxury. Cheap and luxurious. And that's exactly what we're going to be going over today. Five Middle Eastern fragrances that are cheap, but smell like luxury. So stay tuned. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family? I hope each and every one of you are doing freaking amazing today, and welcome back. To my two cents, my name is Brian and this is the channel all about helping boost your confidence through the art of fragrance and helping you become a lasting scent memory. All right, Middle Eastern fragrances, man. You know, when I made this decision to really start getting into Middle Eastern fragrances this year, I didn't really know what to expect and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But I have realized that you, the fragrance family, my subscribers, really enjoy these Middle Eastern fragrances as well. So I'm glad that we're all on the same page. Let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite Middle Eastern fragrances are. Some that are cheap, but smell luxurious. And just let me know some that you think I should get my nose on. I've got a haul coming, and they're all Middle Eastern fragrances. I know you're excited. So something to look forward to. But let's find out what these five affordable fragrances are that I think smell of luxury in today's Whiffs and Sniffs. First up on my list comes from La Taffa. And this one is Oud for Greatness. I mean, I'm sorry, Oud for Glory. <laughs> See what I did there? Man, I'm going to tell you what. This smells so similar to Oud for Greatness, I'm thinking about selling my Inicio Oud for Greatness. Now, Oud for Greatness, it's great. It's a fantastic fragrance, but so is this. This opens up the same way. The heart notes flow in pretty much the same way, and the dry down is really where you're not going to be able to tell any differences between the two fragrances. You got saffron, you got nutmeg to add a little bit of a spicy characteristic to it. You got lavender to add a nice floral aromatic touch to it. A little bit of an underlying sweetness coming from that lavender and also a touch of spiciness. Then you're also going to get some oud, patchouli, and musks, and lots of musks. And these are like a combo, a combo of musks. You're looking at dark musks and some white musks. I don't like how musks makes me like sound like I have a lisp. Anyways, but Latafa, oud for glory. It's glorious. It really is. Long-lasting fragrance. If you're looking at getting into Anisio oud for greatness, I would start here. All right, if you're on a budget, Start with this bad boy, save your money, and then get an ECO Oud for greatness. Because this is a great starting point. This is a good one to have in your collection because it's dry, it's woody, it's got that nice patchouli, it's got a nice spiciness, and it smells very luxurious. For those of you who are looking at getting into Oud fragrances, this would be a good place to start because it's not animalic, it's not funky whatsoever. It's fresh and dry and has a nice warmth to it. Though many people will say this wouldn't be great for the summer, I have to disagree. I think this would be a great one for the spring and summer. If you think about it, in the Middle East, it's always hot. So they're rocking fragrances just like this. Now, I wouldn't recommend wearing this in very humid weather. It could become a little too heavy, a little bit too thick, and a little bit too spicy. But even though if it's hot, I would still rock it. Just saying, that's my opinion. But do yourself a favor, if you're looking for a great Oud fragrance, check out Oud for Glory from La Taffa. All right, this next one comes from Ministry of Oud, and this is Oud Satin. Now, can you guess what this is a clone of, inspired of, dupe of? If you guessed Oud Silk Mood from MFK, well, then you're wrong. It's Oud Satin Mood from MFK. Now, look, I'll say this. They're definitely trying to go after that scent profile. Did they nail it? No, it smells similar. And what they did is they created actually a really nice fragrance. Now, I don't know the note breakdown on this, but this is what I've compiled while wearing it. It's got rose in it. It's got some oud in it. And the oud in this is nice and sweet and adds like a musky undertone and adds a really nice woodiness to the base. You're also gonna have some nice vanilla sweetness through this. Slight watery quality, just adding to that nice rose that's in this. And there's a lot of rose in this. This one is very rose heavy compared to Oud Sat Mood. Now Oud Sat Mood, again, fantastic fragrance. This though is way cheaper, like thousand percent cheaper. This I got for $35 from FragranceBuy.ca. I get great longevity out of this. In fact, if you spray too heavy, it might become a little cloying. You might get a little bit of a headache because it is very loud. 
this projects quite heavily within the first two, three hours. And then it sits closer to the skin and does what it does as a skin scent. It dries down, nice and vanilla sweet, with a really nice underlying woodiness. Great fragrance, musks really do their thing in this. If you're looking for a cheaper alternative to MFK, Oud Satin Mood, and you're balling on a budget and still want to smell luxurious, check out Ministry of Oud, Oud Satin. It's interesting how I just realized I put another Oud Rose combo on here, but this one's coming from Swiss Arabian. And this one is Oud Aswad, or Oud Black, not Oud Aswad, like I want to call it, but Oud Aswad. Oud Black is actually what it means, so, and well, obviously it comes in a black bottle with a gold cap, so Oud Aswad is awesome. The entire Swiss Arabian Shagoff lineup that I've tried, they're great. They're awesome fragrances long-lasting fragrances, beast mode, if you will. This one is a little bit more thick in the rose category compared to the regular Shag Off, though you still have that really nice sweet praline in here. Adding this really nice sugary brulee, like nuttiness to it, like a nice, beautiful, sweet undertone. This also has some leather, some underlying ambery resinous characteristics to it, a nice woods, some nice florals. Obviously, you're gonna get rose, you're gonna get some jasmine, you're gonna get a little pinch of saffron sprinkled in there. This thing is awesome, very long lasting, very projecting, very cheap for when you can find these. About $45 for a 75 ml. I don't know if FragranceBuy.ca still has the box set with all three, the blue, Shagoff, and Aswad, or I'm sorry, Aswad in it, but this is awesome. If you can find that on FragranceBuy.ca with the three, it's only like 70 bucks, 100% worth a whiff and sniff. So if you're looking for something that's cheap and smells luxurious, Great for going out on dates, for hitting the town, going dancing, whatever you cool cats and kittens enjoy doing, then definitely check out Swiss Arabian Shagoff Aswad Oud. This next one is also from Latafa. My apologies. I know that I have a lot of Latafa fragrances. I'm, I'm working on my collection, my Middle Eastern collection. And this one is Velvet Oud. I absolutely love this bottle. I hate the cap because, I mean, you can just flick the freaking cap off does not click into place very well. So don't, if you do pick this up, don't pick it up by the cap. Don't recommend that whatsoever. In fact, I never recommend picking up your bottles by the cap. You never know what could happen. This one does get compared to Tom Ford's Tuscan leather and I can totally see that. But the leather in this is a little bit medicinal like Tom Ford's Tuscan leather, but it's a little dumbed down. You have some citruses. You're also gonna have some incense. Of course, you're gonna have leather. I don't get any oud in this. If anything, it's just there to like polish things off. You're also gonna have some beautiful musks, some really nice projecting musks that really help this thing last and perform and project. This is very long lasting on my skin. Though it doesn't project super heavily the entire time in the first couple hours, good projection, then it dumbs down. Then it sits a little bit closer to the skin. Though you will get a nice sillage wafting around you throughout the day, it's definitely one of those that could get you because Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather, ladies don't tend to enjoy that fragrance or that scent profile. Though I've only rocked this a couple times, I have gotten some really good attention from it and haven't got any backhanded compliments. So if you're looking for a great leather fragrance and you want to smell luxurious, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, I would suggest checking out Latafa Velvet Oud. All right, last but not least, comes from the house of Rasasi, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, and it's Shuhara. Let me know. Did I butcher it? I probably butchered it. But Shuhara is, this one, it was interesting to me, okay? I'm gonna be honest. Like, for initial first blast, I was like, what the hell did I do? What did I pick up? But the more that I've put some time into this, the more testing I've done, the more wares I've put into it, I really like this fragrance. It really is more for, I would say, more of a mature man but it's a confident man that would rock this. Shuhara has an interesting note breakdown. Now there's tomato leaf in here and you can definitely get the tomato leaf. It adds almost like this green muskiness to it, like this bitter green muskiness, but there's also some freesia to kind of tone that down to add a little bit of a sweetness to it. And then you're gonna get a bunch of rose coming in, kind of rounding out that tomato leaf, not allowing it to be so herbal and bitter that it's just, off-putting and then you're going to get some jasmine wrapping itself around those roses and then some sandalwood to kind of give it a little bit of a creaminess 
with a slight dry characteristic. And that dry characteristic is actually coming from cedar. Now, they say there's oud in here. I don't get oud. If anything, it's just adding some musky and woody undertones to it. But there's also oak moss and musks, and I definitely get both of those. The musks in this are beautiful. Must start from the top all the way through the dry down. But Shuhara is fantastic for the price you can find these at. Uh, I enjoy everything that I've gotten from Rosasi. They make bangers. They absolutely do. Hawas, Fatan, Shuhara, great fragrances. Now this is going to be one that you can blind buy because it's so cheap. But if you can find a sample or decant, I would totally do that first. This is an acquired taste. But the more that I've acquired it, the more I've enjoyed it. It smells luxurious in a regal way. It takes a confident man to rock this fragrance. But I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm looking and I see over 3,000 confident men and women watching me on their TV or their phone. I know you got the confidence to rock this. So if you do, if you're looking for a nice luxurious fragrance that ain't going to break the bank, then check out Shuhara from Rasasi. All right, there it is, guys. Five affordable fragrances from the Middle East that will have you smelling luxurious this year. Let me know, again, what some of your favorite Middle Eastern fragrances are, some that you think are so cheap, but they smell so freaking luxurious. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do me a favor and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, Happy scent trails.